Inspire Shop. So we are going to be wrapping up our series in prayer next week. So in the second to last video on prayer, I wanted to touch on being watchful in prayer and about being sober minded as well. So as I was studying uh, this topic of prayer, uh, just that word being watchful kept coming up. And so when we look into Colossians 4, 2, uh, Paul says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. And so it's this interesting concept of being watchful in thanksgiving. And so we talked about thanksgiving in our prayers last week. So if you missed that video, you can go ahead and watch that one. That's a great little tidbit on there. And so we're going to focus on the watchful aspect, right? How many of us are watchful in prayer? What does that mean <laughs> if we are watchful? Uh, so I'm going to dive into the Greek here. Uh, the Greek for watchful is Gregagero, if I could butcher it a little bit. And that means to keep awake. And this is literally figuratively and to be vigilant, to be awake. And so as I was studying this, uh, the first thing that I thought about was how Jesus tells Peter to, as they are in the garden, as he's praying uh, right before um, everything comes down with the soldiers, when he's uh, praying before his crucifixion, he's telling his disciples to be watchful, right? So you don't fall into temptation. And it's the same thing. It's literally to stay awake. And so when we look in First Peter, he tells us to be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brothers throughout the world. And this is 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. And so there is this context of being watchful in order to resist temptation. And so as we are being watchful in our prayer life, we're able to see if uh, the enemy is coming. We're able to see if there's anything up ahead as we are being diligent in our prayer. Um, the verse back in Colossians, it says, continue steadfastly in prayer, right? And steadfast isn't a word that we use too often now, but it really means like immovable. So it's again, the pray without ceasing. We are going to be continuously in prayer and we are being watchful in it with thanksgiving. So as we are watching to see the plans and toys of the enemy. We're also finding Thanksgiving uh, and whatever is going on. And so it's like this whole culmination of what that looks like uh, in order for us not to give into temptation. Because I was sitting here thinking about this and Jesus, you know, as the disciples fall asleep when he is praying at Gethsemane and uh, he's saying, be watchful uh, to resist temptation. And this is right before Peter goes and he denies Jesus three times, right before the rooster crows. As made me think, like, what if he had been not sleeping, right? If he had been awake, if he had been watchful, would he have uh, denied the Lord three times? I don't know. <laughs> it's not really something that um, he would ever know. But it's, again, it was right before that fall that the enemy had him there and he had literally fallen asleep, which is what um, the opposite side of what watchful means. It's um, watchful is we are awake and we are alert and we are able to see the temptation that is coming, seeing uh, the ploys of the enemy. As I mean, Jesus literally tells Peter, you know, you are going to deny me three times. And he says, no, I'm not. Um, and so there are times when we are going to fall into temptation and there are times when we're going to be able to resist it. And I think prayer has a lot to do with that. Because when we are in that constant communication with God, we are able to, to see those things that are not of God. And we're able to see them clearly as opposed to when those lines get gray, right? You have all these 50 shades of gray and all of a sudden everything's okay. When God says, no, this is what I say. This is what my word means. When we are prayerful, we are reading scripture, we're going to have the Holy Spirit conviction, and we are going to be able to resist that temptation. But if we don't even know that we're being tempted, if we don't even know what those temptations are, 
clearly we're not going to be able to resist them. We're not going to be watchful because we don't even know that that guy was bad, right? We're not going to know that was a thief. Oh, he came to destroy. I thought he was my friend because I didn't know, you know, his characteristics or whatever it was. Um, it's just how uh, the Lord works. And so as we are diligent in prayer, we're going to be able to see uh, just how the Lord is moving and the wisdom and insight that he will give us as we are faithful to study scripture and be in prayer. So this week, as we uh, get ready to wind down on our prayer series, I just want to uh, just challenge you to think about what temptations um, tend to uh, do you find yourself in? Do you know what your temptations are? Maybe you love shopping. Maybe you have issues with lust and you, um, all those different kinds of things, wasting time, um, whatever those look like for you, they're different for everybody. But my question is, do you know what you tend to give into? Um, sexual immorality, malice, anger, you know, there's all the lists in the Bible. <laughs> there's a lot of categories there. Um, and if you don't know what those are, I would uh, just say be in prayer to God. Ask them to reveal those characteristics in you that are not of him. And for you to begin praying to resist those temptations as they come up uh, throughout your day, whatever that looks like. Because the first step is to know what your temptations are and then to be able to resist them. And I just pray this week that you would be watchful in that, that you would be able to have a new recognition of how the Lord is speaking to you as you are looking uh, just for what the Lord has in store and what the enemy might be doing, that you'd be able to stay strong in the faith. Have a great week. Cheers.